Hey everyone, I'm back with another video. It is cold out there. So I know a lot of you guys are here from Instagram, so I wanted to give you a little verbal update on what's going on with my Kickstarter. We reached the hardcover goal. Yay! I know that I don't sound very enthusiastic, but I'm, I promise I, I really, really am. Kind of wish I just sat down to record this as soon as I saw that the goal was reached, because I certainly had a lot more enthusiasm in my voice around that time. But I'm super glad, and I'm I cannot wait to get the proofs. Which, by the way, I ordered a proof for the soft cover last night. It took me a very long time to put, to put together the files for the cover because I needed to separate. I don't know if you guys know anything about printing, but it can get kind of complicated. Um, since I really wanted to use special effects on the cover like uh, the holographic foil and the UV gloss spot uh, designs here and there. It took me a while to actually be able to kind of like picture what it's supposed to look like. I, you know, especially with the UV uh, spot gloss, it's kind of all really in your imagination. You can't even do a mock-up for it or anything like that. So. I managed to pull everything together last night with the help of my friend and hopefully the proof will come in sooner rather than later and I'm very excited to show you guys what it will turn out like. On that note, I also wanted to show you what the book plate stickers turned out like. I've already posted some videos here and there on Instagram but here is a closer look and as you can see Part of the artwork is holographic and it's a little bit shiny and I gave it a matte laminate because I wanted I wanted you guys to be able to write your name or a date or something like that on the sticker which I did on my journal just as a test and it seems to be working pretty well. It's not like the easiest thing to write on but I think it serves its purpose and I really wanted to have it like a fancy type of look so the only choice I really had was to make it a matte laminate. And I also ordered another sticker of the chair illustration that I did for the cover of my book. I kind of made it in anticipation for the hardcover goal. And I do have to admit that I felt like it was a little bit full of shit of me to preemptively make preparations under the assumption of inevitable success. But it sure feels good to actually have something ready to go for once and not have to like scramble and panic when the goal was reached, which I'm super happy about again and thank you guys for those of you who pledged and i cannot wait to make this book so this new sticker will also be included as a bonus with every physical order on my kickstarter if you still haven't seen it and want to check it out there's a link in the description so you can take a look at that and yes i will move on to the actual art related part of this video even though i guess everything was kind of art related anyway in this video i'm going to be showing you the process of one of the most popular illustrations I did for this year's Inktober that I called Darkness Beckons. It sounds pretty, um, how do I put it? Dramatic, I guess. I don't know. I couldn't think of a better title. Not the best person at titling things. So here we are. So for the setup, as you can see, I have some little bottles of pre-mixed ink and water. I diluted the ink to general lightish and medium-ish tones that I thought would save me a lot of time. And I was right, they really did. Having to mix it every single time you need to use a color kind of gets annoying. So it was really good to have like an ample amount in the little bottles. And I just wanted to let you guys know why I prefer using colored ink over watercolor. This is because it dries very quickly, I think. Much quicker than watercolor from what I can tell. Maybe like the paper has something to do with it, I'm not sure, but uh, one of the biggest reasons is because it allows for wet layering without reviving any of the pigment from a previous wash. I'm not 100% sure if watercolor could be used like that too, but I know that the brand of watercolor I prefer revives very easily and it can be a huge pain to keep it from mixing. Like I've kind of semi-ruined a lot of drawings in the past and I had to go to serious lengths to fix it and I really didn't want that happening again. Which is why I tend to stick to um, colored ink for as long as I can and then add watercolor later on in the process. It's also really fun to come up with various ways to work um, with the two mediums interchangeably. 
so that's something that I really like about it. For this drawing, I decided to skip the lines for a while, which is not something I usually do but have been doing a lot more lately. I actually had the idea for this drawing envisioned pretty clearly in my head, which is why the process was pretty straightforward and I didn't have to do a whole lot of guessing. And I mean, this isn't a particularly complicated piece to begin with, as you can see it's about the size of a postcard, so that certainly made things a lot easier as well. I actually really like how her face looked in the sketch. Sometimes having the camera on while drawing can kind of make me clamp up, although I think I'm starting to slowly get used to it, but overall, I would say if I could just draw without having to film this stuff, I would much, much prefer that, but unfortunately it's also really fun to look back at it and I want to make videos for you guys, which is why I've been trying to film stuff for almost two years now, again, unfortunately, but here I am editing it now and I will definitely try to record the process from start to finish going forward. And I've also actually discovered a lot of stuff that I do while looking through this footage. Previously, I just kind of tried to record as much stuff as possible and I didn't really bother to look back at it and I could never pull the trigger on the whole YouTube thing. So now that I'm looking through the footage, um, this is one of the better ones for sure. But unfortunately, some of the drawings that I recorded, like, man, I drew half the thing off screen. It's pretty frustrating because I never even noticed while I was recording it. And I guess I, I kind of tend to... I like working very close to the drawing, so I, I keep pulling it like toward me on the table and stuff like that, so it goes off screen, which really sucks because some of the best drawings that I did, and I think that actually has something to do with it, like the more into a drawing I am, the more I become completely oblivious to my surroundings, and that's probably exactly what causes me to pull it closer and forget about the camera altogether. But anyways, I will try to work on that and resolve it for the future. So before this lengthy tangent, I was saying that I actually really liked how her face turned out in the sketch, and I think unfortunately I lost some of the subtlety going into the line work, which, you know, is a very common occurrence, and to this day it still happens no matter how many drawings I do. I guess sketches just tend to have like a different quality to them sometimes. That's pretty hard to reproduce with harsh lines. And so at this point, I'm just defining the silhouette of the character. But yes, this is probably day four of Inktober, was it? Um, so going into Inktober this year, I decided to give myself a lot less constraints than last year. Last year I had this entire list and I literally had a scenario that I came up with for every single day that I wrote down. And at first it was a lot of fun because it was conceptually a lot more developed, the idea was for uh, last year's Inktober. But that was, I mean, it kind of started to feel like a huge project and even though I didn't really have anything else going on at the time that month I really couldn't keep up with it it was it was so much work and back then I also drew significantly smaller and the the, the level of detail was a lot higher since then I've discovered that the, the the bigger you draw the actually the easier it is to work on the details and the faster which was shocking news to me because I always thought that I was being so smart and saving so much time by drawing smaller. Turns out completely not the case and that's probably why I have such shitty vision. But yes, pro tip guys, draw as big as you can right off the bat. It's always easier to draw smaller later, but yeah, many of the lessons learned over the years. Right. I was saying that I made it a lot easier for myself this year and kind of just wanted to have fun and, you know, try to enjoy the challenge uh, instead of giving myself this gigantic project on top of everything. And it went really well. Like, the only constraint I really gave myself was that I only had, like, a couple of hours at the end of the day. Maybe from, like, the time window that I gave myself was from 10 to 12 p.m., I didn't always stick to it, but I did for at least the first six six drawings or so. And the only real constraint I gave myself was kind of just the color scheme, which I also decided to change like a few days going in. So basically it was kind of like a free reign, which was nice. Mm, I did prepare some sizes of paper, so I guess I had like, I ended up with three or four different sizes of illustrations overall. So I guess you can even say that's all over the place. 
Anyway, I think it was largely a success. I did get very tired. And obviously I didn't finish the challenge. I think I got to maybe day 17 or something. And yeah, I ended up taking a big break in the middle. Or like near, I guess near the end of the month. Like middle slash end. But I did come back with a very big illustration for... By big I mean like containing a lot of elements. Illustration for Halloween featuring all my characters that some of you may be familiar with. Which was so fun to do, and I'm so glad they did it. it. It felt like home, honestly. I never draw them anymore, and I really miss that feeling. So I'm hoping to get back to doing that more next year. But I'll talk about that in some other video. So the beginning of Inktober, I was just drawing random characters, uh, coming up with them right on the spot. Uh, I was kind of really into centaurs and fawns. Back in the day, I had like a couple of font characters or Seiker or whatever. Um, and I haven't drawn those in so long, so I kind of wanted to see what I can come up with with the newly acquired skills over the last 15 years since high school. And um, I also have some freelance stuff or had at the time some freelance stuff going on where I had to draw some horses, a lot of horses, and it, it was so fun and I did not think that I would enjoy drawing them so much, but I did. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't know. I just think they look very majestic. Uh, horse, Both horses and centaurs, like half deer or half horse people. Um, ironically, I didn't even really include the bodies in any of these drawings except for one. And I don't even think it was a particularly good one. But uh, I guess, you know, the point of it wasn't really to challenge me or anything like that. I just wanted to have fun and draw like pretty things. Which is nice sometimes, you know, not having to like think too much about what you gotta do. I know a lot of people sometimes complain about how the, the, the easiest, like cheapest way to get popular or something online while drawing is to draw pretty girls, faces, portraits. And it is true, but also, you know, why not? Like, people like that kind of stuff, and I do too, so nothing wrong with that. There's a reason why people like pretty faces, because they're very nice to look at. Anyways. Yeah, so hopefully someday I can show you guys the freelance stuff that I worked on, because it was pretty... It's very different from the stuff that I post on the internet, and I was pretty proud of some of the work, but, you know, freelance is sad that way. You can't really share it. Sometimes you can never share it, which really sucks, but you gotta make the living. And I realized that I barely talked about the process of this actual drawing at all. And that's probably because I kind of tried to talk about it, but it sounded really, really boring to me. So I figured if it sounds boring to you, it's probably going to sound boring to you guys as well. But I'd love to know what exactly like you guys would want me to explain. Because I don't actually tend to think a whole lot while I draw. It's very, very autopilot. And... I don't really know exactly what to talk about specifically. Like, I don't want to just narrate what's going on in the screen and there's no particular thoughts behind it. So, I don't know. You guys tell me. Overall, I'm very happy with this drawing and it was one of the most popular ones, which is pretty cool. I did kind of think it might resonate with people just because it's very simple and the silhouette is clear, there's a lot of contrast, and you know, the, pace, the face turned out pretty. <laughs> yeah, so I also wanted to include the unedited scan versus the cleaned up scan. I usually put in a little bit of work after scanning to like fix the colors and maybe um, just <clears throat> make some of the lines more precise and things like that, which is always fun. Um, I'll try to record that maybe for future drawings. Unfortunately, I didn't for any of the Inktober ones because I had to edit them all in such a rush. I kind of just did it in one big batch. But yeah, so tell me guys what you think about this video and what you want me to talk about next. I was kind of planning to do like a sketchbook flip through. I think that would be a lot of fun and I can just talk about what I use the sketchbook for and show you guys some of the thumbnails that I do for my illustrations. So yes, and I also wanted to give a shout out to my friend Chris Hong Art here on YouTube, who is one of my closest friends and we've known each other for a very, very long time. 
and she's actually the one that kept convincing me to start a YouTube channel and I finally did. So thanks to Chris for finally bringing me over and hopefully we'll do some collaboration videos or something in the future. Okay guys, thank you for listening and watching the video. I hope you found something useful out of it. I know that I didn't really talk about the process, but hopefully next time I will have more interesting things to say. Okay, bye!